Hi, I'm Paris, and I've been wearing the Dexcom Stello CGM off and on now for three months, and I wanted to tell you about some updates to the product. So one of the big updates is to the Stello software. Finally, they allow you to take screenshots. So much nicer to just be able to do this on the phone and send it to someone or keep it for later. Much better than later on having to go into the Dexcom Clarity software on their website and then try to do it from there. So that's one big step forward. The one step back is I've been getting notifications for the past few weeks that the Stello software does not support Android 15, the new version of Android phone software. Do not upgrade to it or you may not be able to get your Stello software to work anymore. At first I thought they'll have that sorted in a few days, but then it went another week and another week. So I'm not sure when they'll get that fixed and my phone keeps telling me, hey, Android 15 is already upgrade and get all the new features, but I've got to wait. Another nice improvement is the notes that you make about what you've eaten or what activity you've done or just a note about when you woke up, when you took a shower, whatever you want to put in here. It used to be those lasted maybe 48 hours and then they just went away somewhere. You could still access them in the Clarity software, but you couldn't find them on the phone after a day and a half or two days. Now, I don't know how far back this goes, but I can scroll and scroll and all my notes are still there for weeks. As for improvements on my side of things, I've figured some things out. One was really a big surprise for me because I've eaten steel cut oats for years as my breakfast. I add in some chia seed, flax seed, some berries, but I was surprised to see when I first started using the CGM how high that spiked my blood sugar. 135-ish, if I were to eat a banana or some tangerines with it, it'd bump it over 140. And 140, at least on the setting that I've chosen, that's uh, the upper limit. I shouldn't be getting my blood sugar over that or certainly not very often, preferably not every day. So initially, gave up my beloved oatmeal breakfast and instead, I would have a protein shake with some uh, vegan protein powder, almond milk, and I'd put the flax seed and the chia seed and the berries and everything, not in a blender. I would just have it in there and eat it with a spoon and, and drink it. And it didn't spike my blood sugar so high, so obviously it was the oats doing it. But I missed my oatmeal, and I was thinking about it that, you know, they say if you use instant oatmeal, it really spikes your blood sugar because it's all ground up and pressed and so it has a lot more, it's much more quickly absorbed. And then you have your rolled oats, then you have your steel cut oats. And steel cut oats are just the oat groat, looks kind of like a grain of rice, an oat groat, that's been cut in half or into a few pieces. So that exposes more area for your digestive juices to get in there and digest it. I thought, well, what about, what about the whole groat? Could I have oatmeal from whole groats and since it's not cut even once, maybe I can still have my oatmeal, but I won't have as high the blood sugar spike. So, went to the store, went to various stores, cannot find it even in Sprouts, Whole Foods, I cannot find the whole groats. But online, I found where I could get a two pound bag for about $8, so I bought that, tried it out, and I was surprised that the, making the exact same bowl of oatmeal but with whole groats rather than steel cut oats, dropped my blood sugar spike about 10 to 15 points. Here's today's graph after breakfast. I've spent about an hour and a half now since I've eaten and you can see my spike went up to about 120, having a bowl of groats with all the other stuff added into it. So long as I don't throw in a banana or some tangerines, I can keep it down, my blood sugar for breakfast down to 120. So it's about noon the next day. The new sensor has gotten to be pretty accurate. I'll show you my evidence for that in just a second. And especially after my meal, I ate the exact same meal with the whole groats, some protein powder, some chia seed, flax seed, berries, exact same meal. Here's what my number was this morning, having eaten that. Just two points difference. So this one is good to go. It, that, that first 12 hours is the iffy time where it can jump around and not be quite as accurate. The trends are correct, but I don't trust the numbers so much. So I'm pleased with my loaded up oatmeal bowl breakfast, only pushing my blood sugar up into the low 120s. I don't think having it up in the mid 130s, which is what it was with the steel cut oats, is really a bad thing. 
when I first started wearing the Stello CGM, I didn't know how to interpret the numbers. I knew the range was supposed to be between 70 and 140, and that if I went out to eat, I could bump it up over 140, sometimes up to 160. But so long as I stayed home, ate my whole food, plant-based, vegan diet, it pretty much stayed under 140. But what I wondered was, would it be even better if it stayed under 130 or under 120? So is that range, it doesn't really matter so long as you stay in that range, what number it gets to or how long it stays at any particular number, or is it better to try to keep your blood sugar levels flatlined and not have them do those spikes? I couldn't find any authoritative source to give me that information. There was lots of information out on the internet that was posted by people who had diabetes, who'd been using the CGMs for years, but they're mostly trying to keep their blood sugar levels below 180, so I didn't really feel it was a comparable situation. But then I did stumble across a group of people who had really good blood sugar levels and seemed to be really strict about where they kept their numbers. They used a program called Levels. That's a company that was letting people who didn't have diabetes get the continuous glucose monitors back before they became available over the counter. They would get you a prescription, so you and I believe sell you the device, and then you downloaded their software on your phone, and it gave you all kinds of analysis. And these people were strict. They'd go into a panic if their blood sugar got over 120. Now, I thought I was doing well with my whole food, plant-based, healthy eating, keeping it under the 140s, but if they're keeping it 120 and under, I wonder, do I need to do that too? And watching the videos produced by the Levels company, they talked about that. The blood sugar don't have spikes over 120. And I think they uh, said the best fasting glucose should be about 80. I worked so hard to get mine down to 90. And I, I didn't imagine how I could ever get numbers that good. And that really frustrated me because I'm not like these younger people trying to prevent developing the health conditions. I'm dealing with the health conditions. So it was really crucial for me to be able to know what my goals need to be. So I didn't know if I should try to make my goals match the goals of these very strict levels people. I did think maybe they're just younger, you know, damn millennials with their excellent blood sugar control. But then I found a researcher on YouTube who did videos talking about what's reasonable to have for your levels and whether you should panic if you ever get up near 140. And he mentioned in his video, I'll link to that down below this video. I, he has a whole series about uh, blood sugar and it, it's very interesting. I like his take on things. He mentioned that most of these studies that get people paranoid about their blood sugar spikes, that the data is taken from a person's any rise in blood sugar throughout the day. So it's not just mealtime spikes because I get a spike every morning when I take a shower. Now, I don't know if it's because the device heats up in the hot water, whether the flesh around there heats up, there's more circulation, so there's more glucose passing by. I'm not sure what it is, but it's very consistent. I get a 10, 12 point rise every morning when I take a shower. Now, he says that that spike will be included in the data of what the average spikes are for these healthy levels people. So a spike taking a shower, a spike exercising, a spike having a little snack, all of these little blips get averaged in with the meal blips. And so it looks like you should be keeping your spikes under 120, but that's not really realistic and not such an accurate depiction of the average blood sugar spike after meals. So I felt a little bit better after seeing that video. And then I gave it some more thought and I was thinking, now this group of people, yes, it is younger people, can tell from the things that they post in comments and on in Reddit and so forth, the people who are using this levels program. But the more I read, I came to realize they had something else in common. A lot of them are in the keto diet camp rather than over in the whole foods vegan camp where I am. And so these are people who tend to eschew carbs. They'll eat lots of meat and lots of fat, things that don't tend to push up your blood sugar very much or very fast. So sure, if I was eating carnivore with just meat and fat, I could probably keep my blood sugar spikes down to a little wobble as well. Of course, my LDL cholesterol numbers would not be wobbling. They would be spiking. That's the trade-off. 
So I felt a little better after realizing that, that this group of people isn't really representative of the diet and lifestyle plan that I'm going with, but it still leaves me not knowing, eating the way I eat, what kind of goals should I really set. In any case, just to be on the safe side, I didn't like having my oatmeal every morning pushing me up close to 140, so I found changing it from steel cut oats to whole oats. I'm down into just the low 120s now, and I can live with that. And in two weeks, when this sensor expires, I will be taking a break for a while. I'll probably start back up sometime in January, and I'll be back to tweaking my diet and seeing you on the next review. There are so many choices and you don't want to stress. You want your health food at home, receiving only the best. That's what we're here for. We give honest reviews. Paris DX.